guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm going to be making a light up card using Pear Blossom Press Easy Lights and I always forget the name of this, <laughs> but if she's got a stamp set and die set with all the fun little interactive buttons. So that I think is super cool. So I'm going to be using those and we're going to be using these little gems that are going to be for our candle flames. And I'm using the awesome birthday stamp set from Spellbinders. So first I'm going to stamp out this lovely candles image using Versify and Claire Nocturne ink. This is my favorite dark, dark black ink. And this is a, I think this is a pigment. Yes, this is a pigment ink, which means that it stays wet a little longer. And I'm always afraid that I am going to smudge it and all that. So what do I do? I do some heat embossing. So I've got my wow clear embossing powder out here and we're just going to sprinkle some of that right over the top. I also really like the wow clear embossing powder because it's got anti-static properties. As long as you store it in its container, you shouldn't have a problem with it going where it's not supposed to. Of course, I am doing this on white cardstock over black, so it's not like I'm doing black heat embossing. The black heat embossing would wind up everywhere. So let's go ahead and heat this up. So next we're going to start coloring up our images. I'm just using one of my Spectrum Noir pens here and I'm starting off with just the flames kind of to give me an idea of where I want to color. Now these flames are going to also have those little gems over the top so this part doesn't really matter all that much but I'm going to also put a little bit of a halo around them. So I'm kind of just drawing a circle around each of my flames. Hey guys, although I had an idea of what I wanted to do, this is still seat in my pants. I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> that is the way it is. I th Everything basically inspires me as I go along. So if something is holding you back, if it's because you don't know what you want to make or how you want to make it, just sit down and start playing because you know what? The ideals, ideas will come to you. Okay, next I think I want to put some blue on the background. So... That'll be nice. I'm going to go into the background and just you know, try not to hit my candles. And go around that halo, which is why I did the halos first. And I'm using the bullet nib close up to the candles and then I'm going to come back in with the with the chisel, the chisel tip to basically get the rust done because otherwise it will take me forever to get this coloring done. Now that all of the coloring is done, I'm going to... I th I'm going to try something I've never tried before. I'm actually going to try using two easy lights on one card. That will give me six lights. There are 13 candles. So I'm going to go ahead and just poke a hole at the base of the candles. And I'm going to put a light behind. Just at the base of our candle flame. Two. Three. Four five and six decide to go every other so i can see the holes on the back and now i can take a couple of my lights and start taping down all of the lights so if you've never used pear blossom press lights before this is the way that they come they actually come in a strip like this and they just break apart don't worry, the first time I picked them up, I thought I was going to break it. Turns out they're supposed to break apart like that, so that's perfectly fine. So what you do is you put your battery with the plus sign up into the wide end. I've tried putting in the other, it will not fit. You just slide it right on in and always, always, always check the button. I'll press the button to test it. And we have some lights that light up. Already done that on both of these. 
And what I'm gonna do at this point is just tape down each of the individual lights behind one of the holes. Now this is the way that the lights come. It's got a flat side. You can probably see a little bit of metal back there, a flat side and a rounded side. The rounded side is the LED and that's what you want to face out through the hole. So we're gonna place that down right over that and I'm just taking some scotch tape to tape it in place. And then you can test it to make sure it works. So now we've got a little light coming out through that one little hole. I'm gonna do that for the rest of these. And again, we're making sure that the, the round side is actually facing down. Okay, now that we've got all those taped in place, let's test it and make sure that they work. And all of our little lights are lit up. That is awesome. Okay, so now we need to figure out where do we want to put our mechanism. So I'm thinking they're gonna need to be up near the top because there's not really that much space. Well, we could probably put them at the bottom. Maybe we'll put them down here. Let's give that one a try. So if I put it here and here. Okay, and then I'm going to take a piece of cardstock to kind of bridge the gap between them and give it a little bit extra pressure. Then I also need to make sure I make a big enough button on the front. To adhere these down, I'm just gonna use some double-sided adhesive, just some tape on there and just tape that down. I'm also going to try to position my um, my mechanism so that the battery side, the part where you can remove it, is actually facing outward. So since this is going to be facing down, it would mean that this would be facing down at the bottom here and then the same kind of thing on this one facing that way. Well, actually, you'd only be able to do one of the batteries. I may wind up new using something I haven't done before. In with that stamp set, where did I put it? In with this stamp set from Pear Blossom Press is some dies where you can actually make a, a doorway behind the battery pack so you can change the batteries. So that would be cool. And of course I changed my mind. So instead of putting some paper in front of the little buttons on the back, I'm gonna put a decent size button on the front of the card. So I'm just using a hole punch and a scrap of white cardstock. And this is going to be my button on the front so folks will know that they need to push the button, right? So next I'm going to burnish the back of my release paper. Now the reason I do that is to make sure that it adheres really well. Don't want this popping off. I want to hold everything in place so the button is where it belongs, right? And then I'm just using my pokey tool to help me remo remove the release paper. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and place the first one I'll give it a little bit of space away from the edge. Oh, and that was not where I was deciding I was gonna move it, right? We were gonna put it down in the corner here. So let's do that. Give it a little bit of space from the edge. And do the same thing with the other one. Actually, I think I'm gonna move this back just a little bit. Now we'll put it right about there. And then this one can go right beside it so that the buttons are pretty much together. Okay, let's see how that does. So if we press here, it lights up all six lights. Next, we can just tape down those extra wires so they don't get in our way. Perfect. Okay, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some foam tape to the back. I'm gonna be using Pear Blossom Press World's Best Foam Tape. This stuff is fabulous. It is 
thicker than most. It's double thick, and it, so it's the perfect height for using with our lights. And it is repositionable. <laughs> so if you mess up, like I've done, um, if you mess up, you can put it back down. It's not going to rip your paper. So now that I've got all of this done, the guts are done, I realize this is actually too big. <laughs> I always do a little bit of a white outline all the way around the edges of my card, but even without that, it's still bigger than my card base. So I'm going to fix it. I am going to trim it down. Yeah, putting everything in my <laughs> in my paper trimmer as is. And just trying not to touch the, the sticky part of, of the ones that are the curved. Yeah, I'm going to trim this down to four. So let's go ahead and go to four and an eighth on one side. Take a look at this outside and make sure it still looks okay. Okay, I'm gonna trim, I'm not gonna trim any off of the bottom, but I do wanna make sure that it is straight. So it is straight, that's good. And I can't really trim off much on this side either. So I'm gonna have to trim it on the other. So one of the wonderful things is that the foam tape is repositionable. So I can peel that off. and it does not rip my card and I can trim this down a little more I really want to trim it on this side though okay I'm gonna try it I'm gonna see if I can move my lights without ripping anything because this tape is not repositionable tape this is regular okay so I'm moving it down just a little bit so that I could try okay yay it didn't stick too badly that up just a little bit let's bring that back up over here a little bit okay and now we should have we're gonna have a white border all the way around perfect okay this is also the first time I've used the little door thing on here and I was thinking it was a rectangular die but it's not one side is actually a hinge so I've got a hinge right there so when we place everything down on the card we can just leave it as is and they'll be able to pop it open that is awesome so let's go ahead and put it back down onto the card base and of course the tape is sticking to my finger There, there we go. And then on the inside, they'll be able to open it up if they need to change out the batteries. And I'm putting this piece down right here because it doesn't, it has the release paper still on there and that way it doesn't, yeah, that way it doesn't stick to the door. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add our little gems to the front and I need to do a sentiment. So I'm going to place my push mark kind of in the middle covering both of them. So I've got one light. Yeah, one of the lights is over here. One of the lights is over here. One of the buttons. So I'm going to push it right here in the middle. And they may only catch one, but that's okay. It's kind of where, depending on where they push, they're gonna have different things lighting up. So that's kind of cool. I think it actually kind of looks kind of neat with part of them, part of part of them, lighting up and part of them not. So let's go ahead and put our sentiment down. Hey, <laughs> stop getting older. You're weirding me out. And then I can add on all these little gems. So some of them are going to light up brighter than others. So I think what I'm gonna try is, I'm gonna try to use the bigger of the candle gems on the ones where they're gonna light up more. Let's see if I can do that. Cause there's some big ones and some little ones in here. So I'm gonna try using just the little ones on those 
flames that are not going to light up quite a Yeah, there we go. I think that is awesome. I love this birthday card. This is so fun. Anyway, yeah, you guys have a great day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.